Hello everyone and welcome back. Today is July the 1st. We are officially halfway through the year and I just want to go over some new things Ghost of Deboer has come out with such as a big patch with a lot of bug fixes as well as some game changing things that might happen into the future. So let's get into that right now. I'm sure most of you know by now that Ghost of Deboer has had a big patch. So let's go through some of the stuff they have added and some of the bug fixes that they worked through being that this patch is mostly bug fixes and quality of life changes. So they added a new EOTech Flex Mini and an E XPS3 and an RMR site. From my understanding, the EOTech is just the uh, the hollow site without the magnifier, the three times magnifier, which is really nice. I, I like the, the clean look of just a holographic site. One is like a red dot site more for your pistol and the other looks fairly similar, just slightly different. You can use it for ARs and, and the side rail attachment for kind of a canted site. Also a small change for the ACOG site and I, and I assume they're gonna get this prepared for the M4 when the standard attachment rail comes in with that gun. So the standard attachment rail for an M4 is what's on the M16 currently. The feature with the ACOG site is that you can actually stick them on top of these of these handles. They look like handles. It's it's meant for you to be able to carry the gun. M4 standard M4s come with this too, but Ghost of Boar decided to make their standard M4 with the rail just to make things easier and more streamlined for the attachments. But in the future, I assume that the M4s and the M16s are all going to look fairly similar. This is going to get it prepared for modular weapons when you actually have to buy the new dust covers and buy the new top rails for your guns to actually be able to put different types of attachments other than the ACOG on top of the upper receiver of the weapon itself. They finally fixed the squad system as well, where every time you'd like do a few raids with your buddy, it would show he's offline and you have to restart his game or you'd have to restart your game. That was super annoying and it happened through a few patches. It just kept breaking. I'm very glad they finally decided to really work on it. And I'm sure it's going to break in the future, but that's just the, the nature of servers and all this technical bullshit, you know? I don't know how it works, but it's difficult apparently. They reworked the labs area on Island of Tabor, new optimized models, which is good. Once they start, you know, making their own stuff and putting them into the game, they're going to be more optimized, which means better performance. We want this. This is important, especially to be running on, on a system that does not have very much processing power. Your headset uses like a cell phone chip and they need to make it work on that thing. It's it's very annoying. I, it's a pet peeve of mine, but they got to do it to make money. They got to do it to sell this game. So ultimately they have to do it. This is a huge one. They reworked matchmaking to prioritize full servers when possible. And this is going to bring me to an issue that's uh, that Scott has been talking about a bit later on. We'll talk about this uh, near the end of the video, but this is cool. I, I really am happy that the raids aren't going to be empty anymore. I mean, maybe sometimes there is a chance you're going to get some empty raids, but now it's prioritizing full lobbies. You're going to get more action packed lobbies. You're going to have to maybe wait a bit longer in the queue, but that it's nothing compared to like Tarkov, for example, where you have to wait an average of three to like eight minutes in Tarkov. This game is more like you won't wait any longer than five minutes because you'll just load into a raid regardless if it's full or not after five minutes. And this brings us to reworking the matchmaking to allow for noob queues. Anybody um, under level five will be matching together no matter what until you get over level five, just so you know people, so noobs can learn the game. Makes sense, right? Reworked attachments, visible, visible hologram to show where the item can be applied. You're going to get this ghostly white silhouette on top of your gun for whatever attachment you happen to grab that will fit the gun so you can see where it goes. This will help the, the newbies as well understand where certain attachments go. Improved players death ragdoll animations, uh, not jumping like a cartoon anymore. Yeah, this is this was a funny glitch. Uh, I mean, ultimately I'm happy they got rid of it, but it was a funny glitch where you'd shoot somebody in the head and they spring into the air do like 50 backflips. It was hilarious. It was a very funny thing that was in the game and it was uh, made for entertaining times for the kills. But we got to go for realism here in this game. Improved reconnection reliability, including trying to reconnect you automatically, automagically, if possible, and or a network area. 
error. So this is important because if you disconnect, you can reconnect into the same raid, into your character. You won't lose progress. You won't lose your, your shit. That'll make things much less of a pain in the ass because uh, you don't want to uh, find good loot and then desync out of the raid, which is very common. That's a fun breaker. That's not a, that's not just a game breaker, but it's also a fun breaker. So going through some bug fixes, they fixed the gliding glitch. Okay. Yep. Okay. We've seen that a few times when your character wouldn't be moving properly. Fix an issue where the players would get a false message announcing an update followed by kicking them out of the game. Interesting. Fix a crash link to the social tabs of the main terminal. Fix the Ruger, Ruger Mark IV bottom rail. Okay. I guess it was broken. Fix grabbing the backpack while climbing. Okay, good. Can't grab your backpack while grabbing a ladder anymore. That is, that's awesome. I used to lose my backpack in the buildings and stuff when I was like climbing a ladder. It, I've lost GPUs that way. It sucks. Fix being unable to grab items from crates without opening and closing a crate a few times. Okay. Fix the shotgun sonsa not fitting into the backpack. Good. Fix the Saiga magazine limited to one unit in the market. Okay. Fix textures breaking when setting the settings to low on PC VR. Thank God. Fix being able to scan and purchase but not receive suppressors you haven't unlocked. <laughs> I didn't know this was in the game, but it was an exploit for sure. Fix some situation where a player's weapon would not drop after being killed. Okay. That's good. I think the gun used to just like float there. Yeah, I'm glad they fixed that too. Thank goodness. They're doing slow, like little realism features into the game. Just getting rid of those dumb realism breaking bugs. Map fixes on Island Tabor. Fix collision with certain rock formations. Fix aggressive culling. And Makam, yes, underground, they fixed a kill volume that was too easy to trigger. I don't know what that means. In silo, they fixed some wall offsets, visible, visible seams and things like that. So that's good. That'll uh, bring us to the full update. I want to uh, talk about some posts they've made after this. And this is really interesting because they are collecting data on this game. This game is widely still an early access game. So what they're going to be doing is taking our data, you know, seeing how many people are playing what maps, seeing what kind of weapons people are using. This is all for balancing. This is all to make the game, all the content in the game as fun as possible for everybody and as balanced as possible. So everybody's kind of using everything generally at the same amount of times, whether it's going to maps or using weapons or what kind of ammo people like to use, stuff like that. So shortly after this update, actually yesterday, a matter of fact, Got has made a recent post and this is going to be very interesting. I want to get your guys' opinion on, on what he means by this because he doesn't really share any ideas that he's having so far but uh, yesterday he says hello everyone I'm excited to share our vision for upcoming updates we're focusing on enhancing the current maps adding more apartments and building interiors for Maka that's pretty freaking cool and possibly expanding silo we're also reworking areas on island and underground to improve the overall experience this is a developer who's paying attention to the data and paying attention to us as the players so this is very cool to see and uh, he's gonna make a funner game because of it uh, we've noticed that only two maps are frequently played and one of those mainly during the daytime. We hope the Chodav shopping mall will become one of the top played maps alongside them. This is just him hoping what they're working on right now is going to be popular. I get it. You're working on something you think it's going to be good, but ultimately the maps he is referring to is yes, silo and daytime Island. Those are the two most popular maps. It's been well known for a long time. People aren't playing nighttime maps enough. People aren't playing Maka and Underground, especially Underground enough. People don't like Underground. I personally don't like Underground. Maka Daytime, I think is my favorite. Ultimately, that map is just not played all that much. So he goes on saying, we will not begin work on a new map until the new year after we release the Tradov shopping mall map. So that's the new shopping mall map that they've been working on. Something akin to Interchange on Tarkov. Won't be nearly as, as big as that, but something like that. Our goal is to improve the current experiences and make them unforgettable. Tying into our new mission system. The new mission system is going to be crazy. It's going to be a lot like how Tarkov's work, where it's going to be a linear mission system through through the map. You're going to have like in-map storytelling. You're going to have, you know, missions that you can't repeat like you do now. The new missions are going to be interesting. It's going to require you to do, to, to do nighttime raids, whether or not they're how much they're going to be changing those. It's going to require you to kill certain bosses a certain number of times. It's going to require you to do certain things that aren't in the game right now. He goes on saying, additionally, we want to implement a new way to do day night maps this is interesting he says which is a significant task but essential for tabor's development will keep you updated on the progress 
and all he says is thank you for your continued support and feedback now i don't know how he's going to do this i haven't had time to come up with a theory on how somebody would do this in a game like like ghost of devore but as ghost of devore gets more complicated and the development cycle gets more in depth you are going to see it separate from tarkov from a game like tarkov because ultimately ghost of war is a different game you don't have as many people playing that's probably the one of the biggest differences in ghost of war to tarkov tarkov can have a lot of different systems and ways you can play the game because there's so many people playing that game that no matter where you go there's going to be some sort of content to experience and risk of pvp in ghost of the board there's just not enough people in vr in general there's not enough people playing this game so they need to balance out the content in in a way more of a specific way i hope this doesn't milk down the game and make it like some sort of like boiled down version of tarkov as it kind of currently is i hope that's not like the ultimate goal of this game i don't think it will be but they do have to change how the day night cycle stuff is balanced and they need to make it so people will generally play nighttime because right now they're not what he says is we want to implement a new way to do day night cycles which is a significant task but essential towards to board's development i believe because he mentioned missions here there will be nighttime required missions things like that that will help with support other things they could do is maybe only make house of scott available for nighttime raids they could make you know only certain bosses available for nighttime raids such as how they work the cultists right now they need to do more things like that maybe add a, a special types of loot at night they need to just add more incentive for nighttime raids. Tarkov didn't, doesn't need to do that. They didn't and don't need to do that. They have the cultists at night, but that's it. Tarkov does not need to do that because like I said, there's so many people playing that game and there will always be a good queue of people wanting to play nighttime raids as opposed to Ghost of War where there will not be because it's just not nearly as many. It's like a hundred times more people play Tarkov. That's the, that's the issue that they're facing and the balancing troubles that they're having right now. So they're going to work this all into the, the development. The game is is, like he said it's only around 25 percent done from what scott said in his most recent interview with ego go check out that video that interview was really well done so definitely check that out for some good insight because that that interview is great some questions that ego asked in there was like not questions that we've had in the amas and there were really questions that were in in me burning in me that i really wanted to know so check that video i'll link it down below other than that that's it for today and uh we can move on let me know in the comments section below how you think they're going to do day nights cycles going into the future and i'm going to do another video soon so please like and subscribe that would be excellent i will catch y'all later